Good morning, everyone. Did all of you have a great celebration yesterday? Yeah. yeah, I did too. I mean, we had ham and turkey and all the fixings and as much as you could possibly eat, and I tried my best. I would, and it was such a great day to be with family, and it is such a great day to be here with you this day after Christmas, and uh, we are delighted that this many has shown up uh, on the Sunday after Christmas. Uh, I would uh, like to make a couple of announcements. If you have given up poinsettia, or even if you haven't, if there's any left over, we will invite you following the service to come and to, and to pick up your poinsettia and take them home. Also, our office will be open this Friday until 2 o'clock to receive your, your gifts, your offerings, and your tithes for 2021, or have it postmarked by the 31st if you mail it in so that we will have that. 
we have a little way to go, but you know, I think we're going to be very, very close of making our budget this year. Isn't that good news? Good news. So let's turn and welcome each other. Welcome to First Church. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friday night we had a wonderful Christmas Eve service uh, at 12 noon at 5 o'clock and at 5 o'clock we did something we've never done before. We had to bring out chairs. We had 200 chairs. Yes, we had 200 chairs prepared. We brought out 20 more and people still were standing. And so it was a great, great evening. And singing that night uh, was, uh, was Grant. And a well, Ava wasn't singing, but she's singing today. And they are coming from our uh, contemporary service and listen closely to them today.
be with you. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to come and worship you this day at the Christmas. What the greatest day of the year and the greatest day in all of history when your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, was born. Our hearts were filled with the overflow of joy and happiness, and may we feel your light among us today. For those who are not able to be here because of illness or other reasons, we pray that you would heal them, that you would be with them, that you would comfort, strengthen, and empower them in every way. We pray, dear Lord, for those who are here, may they feel your power and your presence, understand the reason for this season is for the birth of the Savior of the world. And because he has saved us and redeemed us, we are the happiest people the world has ever known. Uh, thank you, dear Lord, for all of us who are preaching today. We especially lift up Meredith to you. Empower her with the Holy Spirit. Give her the words to say that we need to hear. And may we really celebrate the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now let us pray as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now Yvonne is going to come and share with all of our children. We invite y'all to come down. And be with us. Pajamas and all. Good morning, everyone.
Good morning. Did everyone have fun celebrating Jesus' birthday yesterday? Yes. Did Santa Claus come to you as well? Yes. So, have you ever lost something like your favorite lovey, stuffed animal, toy? Anybody? Don't you remember losing lovey in Disney World and someone came chasing? I think you misplaced this. Will they come finding us? Yeah. You lose anything? Shoes, socks? No, 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 no. Mommy's over here shaking her head. Yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, I lose my keys all the time. My husband loses his wallet or can't find his keys. You know, us adults are always misplacing something. Have you ever been in a store and got separated from your mom and dad? <laughs> of course, my son will raise his hand because that's exactly what I'm going to talk about. You know, I was so afraid. What are you doing up there, buddy? Oh. <laughs> okay, great. So it did happen with me, and it happened with my son. And he raised his hand. He owns it. And we were in a store one day, and um, he hates shopping. We were looking for clothes. And all of a sudden, I couldn't find him. I started to panic. My face, just everybody around me was like, are you okay, ma'am? Are you okay, ma'am? I was like, I can't find my son. What seemed to be an eternity was probably like 30 seconds. Hi, Mom. As he pops his head out from underneath a clothing rack. <laughs> it was very frightening. Well, you, do you know that that happened to Mary and Joseph? But there, his son, Jesus, was 12. And they went to a festival. And they came home, and they didn't realize Jesus wasn't with them. For three days, they searched. Now, I searched for 30 seconds and couldn't find you and was in panic mode, and people around me knew that. I couldn't imagine losing my son for three days or my daughter, and, 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 and that, that's frightening. So how do you think Mary and Joseph felt when they couldn't find Jesus? Worried. Scared? Worried? I know, right? Well, one day they found him. They found him in the, after three days, they found him in the temple. Was Jesus afraid? Was he scared? No. Because he was right where he needed to be. So, although Mary and Joseph were scared and worried, Jesus was not. He, he was meeting with teachers and talking and learning, and, and he, didn't even, he didn't even realize how scared his parents were. So, when we follow Jesus, who is never lost, we will never be lost either. In the world where things and people often feel lost, it's a very nice gift to know that Jesus is with us in our hearts every day. And we're living with this gift. It just makes us feel so much stronger and better. That's really good news that we have today. So let's pray and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you, Jesus. Who offers us the gift of always being at home in and with you. Amen. We now invite the ushers to come forward to receive your tithes and your offerings.
Dear Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you bestow upon us, and now we return to you in part that which you have given to us. May you continue to pour your blessings on each and every one. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. We invite you to take a hymn book and sing with us hymn number 250. Hymn 250. Scripture lesson today is from Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. Joseph and his mother did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And when he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them, and his mother treasured up all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and man. Word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe see. Laverne is uh, one of the newest members of our choir, and we are so honored. 
to have him in our choir and his voice. All I want to say to you, you're in for a treat. Thank you. It's my blessing to be here, both Brenda and myself. I'm sorry she's not here this morning. She's under the weather a little bit, but we've loved worshiping with you and uh, hope to get much better acquainted with many of you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, full of grace and truth, full of grace and truth. Down from his glory, ever living story, my God and Savior came, and Jesus was his name. Born After Jesus is born in a manger, we gather back together, fast-forwarding to Jesus as a 12-year-old in the temple, curious, intellectual, and insightful. This is a story that shows us that Jesus, as a young man, was smart and extroverted and impressive. When I think of young people who are prodigies, Mozart and Stevie Wonder come to mind. According to Britannica, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was the child prodigy par excellence, playing songs on the harpsichord at four years old and composing simple music at five. There's no shortage of anecdotes about the young Mozart's astonishing musical dexterity, memory, and creativity in composition. The more contemporary example, 
Stevie Wonder. D despite being blind from birth and growing up in poverty, Stevie Wonder, born Steveland Judkins Morris, managed to become a skilled musician in early childhood, learning to write music, sing and play the piano, organ, harmonica, and drums. In 1962, at age 12, the same age as Jesus in today's story, he began recording music and performing professionally. He quickly established himself as a serious musician who combined creative songwriting and mastery of disparate styles of music, including rhythm and blues, soul, funk, rock, and jazz. He was inducted into the Rock and, the rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1989 when he was only 38 years old. So in some ways, I see Jesus as like the Stevie Wonder and the Amadeus Mozart of his day. To be 12 years old and to have the ear and attention of your elders is quite a feat. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of Passover. Now, the festival of Passover is a commemoration of the story from the book of Exodus where God frees the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. According to Google, this trip between Jerusalem and Nazareth is 64 miles. And if we're wondering how Mary and Joseph didn't realize that Jesus was missing, I would imagine that they were traveling by foot in a caravan, and it took time to realize that he had fallen behind somewhere along the way. And the reason for going to the festival of the Passover is to celebrate the Passover, which is where the Spirit passed over all the houses of the Egyptians in the 10th plague and killed many of the firstborn. But the Jewish houses who had the blood of the lamb over the door were passed over. And second, it was what I read into it, it was for Jesus coming of age within the Jewish community. Within modern Jewish communities, Jewish boys and girls, many of us might have friends who are Jewish, they have customs of the bar or bat mitzvah, and that occurs at age 12 or 13. I am definitely not an expert on Jewish customs, so I apologize if I get any of this incorrect. When young people have this coming-of-age ceremony, they gain responsibility for their own actions, and they can decide for themselves how they want to practice their religion. In the United Methodist Church, we call this process confirmation. And it's a joy to us because it's the age where you receive your own offering envelopes. <laughs> I would gather that this festival of the Passover, Jesus was taking it upon himself to begin engaging in Judaism in his own way. He wasted no time. In today's Jewish community, bar mitzvahs are where you reach the age to become a full-fledged member of the community with the responsibilities that come with it. A great example in our church community is, is Preston Bowers. Uh, he went through confirmation last year, and he has taken it upon himself to be a very responsible young man. You, you saw him usher this morning, so he's a wonderful example. They, they, moral responsibilities for the Jewish community include eligibility to be called to read from the Torah, the right to possess property and get married, the duty to follow the 613 laws of the Torah and keep the halakha, and the capacity to testify as a witness in a Beth Din, a rabbinical court case. Scripture says, after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw them, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? Jesus asks. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? There's no evidence that Jesus was being disrespectful to Mary and Joseph. Instead, he was taking it upon himself to practice his religion as he saw fit as a man in the Jewish community. And he was very young to be engaged with the leaders on the level that he was. Jesus was in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And he grew in wisdom and stature 
and in favor with God and with man. So we ask ourselves, is it possible that Jesus knew at the age of 12 that he was the Son of God? Yes, I believe it's entirely possible. From this point on, Jesus grew with God and with man. If we could have a certainty of our purpose on earth, how would we live each day? We would live it with purpose. We would live it with vigor. And we would live each day with excitement. Jesus discerned his purpose and he knew who he was, the Son of God. Imagine that every ounce of energy, every bit of time he had, was put to good use in becoming what God intended him to become in a way that was respectful and useful in the society that he was in. Jesus wasn't behaving like a power-hungry, over-dominant figure. He was behaving like someone who deeply cared and was interested in the religion of his people and God the Father and God's will for his life. Have you ever seen or heard of someone who was driven, absolutely driven, to become something? What did their actions, their words, their use of their time, what did it look like? They probably come off as unique, to put it lightly. The truth is that many of us never understand what our purpose is or take the time to understand and discern what God wants us to do with our life. With all of the self-help books and the websites and the memes available to us, the best thing that I can tell you is that self-understanding and talking with God regularly is the best way to discern your purpose. We know from the Gospels that Jesus spent time alone with God. And if we do, we stand a much better chance of understanding our purpose as well. For Christmas, my Aunt Susan gave me a book by Kathy Lee Gifford titled, It's Never Too Late. It's Never Too Late. On page 197, Kathy Lee discusses a pulse and a purpose. She writes, if I wake up every morning and I still have a pulse, that means I still have a purpose too. Kathy Lee wrote this song. If I have a pulse, I have a chance to change someone else's circumstance. If I have a pulse, I have a privilege to save someone who's on the edge. If my heart is still beating when I awake, I can change someone else's world for heaven's sake. If I have a pulse, I have an opportunity to lead that soul into eternity. If I have a pulse, if I have a pulse. Walter Russell Bowie says of Jesus, the boy of 12 did not go to Jerusalem with overbearing confidence to lay down the law, or as the rock says, to put the smack down. <laughs> he went with eagerness of an open mind and with simplicity of spirit. Jesus wasn't the type of young man to manipulate others and magnify himself in a situation. He was the type with a clear motive, transparent and a clear sense of purpose that came from discernment with God the Father. So I don't know if you have been considering your New Year's resolutions. Most years I do try to make resolutions and we all know how that turns out. Sometimes we succeed and sometimes we don't. But this year, as we near 2022, I would like for you to consider how you can quietly discern your purpose for living this life that God has given you. What is your purpose where you are in your life? What are you going to do with this life? If we have a pulse, we have a purpose. I'd like to leave you with this poem by Mary Oliver titled, The Summer Day. Who made the world? Who made the swan and the black bear? Who made the grasshopper? This grasshopper, I mean. The one who has flung herself out of the grass. The one who is eating sugar out of my hand. Who is moving her jaws back and forth instead of up and down. Who is gazing around with her enormous and complicated eyes. Now she lifts her pale forearms and thoroughly washes her face. 
Now she snaps her wings open and floats away. I don't know exactly what a prayer is. I do know how to pay attention, how to fall down into the grass, how to kneel in the grass, how to be idle and blessed, how to stroll through the fields, which is what I've been doing all day. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this story of the boy Jesus in the temple. Help us to be able to see beyond the surface details into a man who knew himself so intimately and discerned his purpose that God had for him. Help us to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together and sing First Noel, hymn 245.
May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with each of us now and always. Amen.